How's it going, folks? I want to show you a few tips for using automation in Logic Pro. I often see people not really using Logic Pro automation to its fullest potential and kind of stumbling the way around, and that leads to people not wanting to use automation. Now, automation is one of the best ways to get excitement, movement, and get a bit creative with your mix. It's worth knowing a few tricks to get around it faster. So here's just a few for you. Now I've got a backing vocal here and I often see people using automation in its most simplest form. So they'll draw a dot, then they'll draw another dot, another one, another one, and then grab it up. Okay. It does work and it does kind of essentially give you the same effect. But what's even easier is if we just get rid of all this for a moment and go up to our secondary tool. Now, if you make that the marquee tool, and I would suggest that you always have the marquee tool as your secondary tool, because it's just so convenient. Uh, when we hold command, we're going to have a marquee tool. We can just draw a box over that word. And then without even deselecting anything, just drag it up. It's a great way of just creating automation so quickly. And we can do that across a number of tracks as well. We can do that across all these four tracks. Um, then we can just move them up and they'll all move together. Don't even have to have them all in a group or anything. Great way of affecting a load of tracks all together really quickly. And indeed just drawing automation far better than clicking a load of dots because nobody wants that. So there is an inherent problem with automating the fader on a track if you want to bring the volume up and I'll show you what that is. So I've got a bit of automation here and I've got my fader down here. Now, if we press play, then you're going to see the fader come up to the minus four point at this moment. Check it out. Took you out again on Friday. Okay. And that works. That's fine. But then if I try and move that fader up for the entirety of everything and then hit play, watch the fader it's going to snap down because we've told it to be at a certain point at a certain time. Now using different automation modes, we can kind of sometimes get around this depending on a load of different scenarios, but the one surefire way of making it so this doesn't happen is to put a game plugin on the, on the inserts. I harp on about this all the time. This is the best way to automate volume of a channel in logic pro because you don't lose control of your fader. What you need to do, go into it, go into utility, go on gain and this is going to be exactly the same thing okay so let's just draw a box over that and then bring that gain up and you'll see that at any point i can just bring the fader up it's not going to snap so down to anything you out again on Friday. and i'm still going to get that volume rise it's just such a simple thing and you can put it in different places. So if you have a compressor here, then you put the gain before it, it's going to ride more level into the compressor or put it afterwards. It's going to allow the compressor to function normally and come down afterwards. Such a better way of automating volume without losing control of your fader. Now you may have seen in that last tip that I wanted to automate my gain. So all I did was I clicked the gain control and my automation automatically flicked over to gain. How do you do that? Well, go up to mix, and then go to auto select automation parameter in read mode. That means that whatever parameter you click when you're in automation mode, it's just going to automatically know that you want to use that parameter. So for example, if I go to my snare track, which is all the way up here, I know that I've got BX console on here, which is a great plugin, by the way. If I just want to automate the, I don't know, the compressor threshold, I just click it and watch this change. Boom. Or the ratio. Boom. It's just going to create a lane for you because it knows that that's the thing you want to affect. And once you have that on, it makes things so much easier. I actually can't think of a reason why you wouldn't have that on. So go and turn it on now. When you're using automation, if you're using the marquee tool, as you probably should, then you'll notice as I scroll across here, it's not doing a smooth scroll. It's kind of going in steps. That's because I've got snap on. So let's just turn snap off for a moment and I'll do that same thing. It's going to be a lot more of a fluid kind of movement and you can go kind of anywhere. Now you may think that having a fluid movement is advantageous, but it's not because music is done in bars and divisions of bars. It's far easier for you to actually not have it completely fluid. Let's say that I just want to turn up, I don't know, just this one, two, three snare hits. If I have it on the fluid movement, then it's kind of, I don't know, it works, but it's not going to be quite as accurate. If I have it on snap, then I can go to those same ones and it's just going to snap straight away to those hits. Now, admittedly, it's missed it on that one because this is not to a click. Whoever recorded this should have done it to a click. 
but you can see how it's just going to completely go to the grid and once you zoom in a bit more it can be a lot more precise and you can change that to anything you want really i have that on um automatic most of the time you can have it so it goes to a bar half notes quarter notes or minims and crotchets as we tend to call them in england um just a super easy way of making your automation that a little bit easier Imagine if you want to just automate the entirety of a chorus while snapping to a bar, it's going to make that a lot easier. If you have it completely fluid, you're not going to be quite as precise. Now, you can automate two parameters at once by just turning one knob. You can automate several parameters at once just by turning one knob. And it's really easy to do, but I don't see a lot of people doing it. But it's quite inventive and it's quite cool to be able to do it. So I'm going to show you exactly how to do it. Use your smart controls. So press B on your keyboard for a start that's going to bring up your smart controls. Now, what we want to do is on our parameter mapping. Oh, by the way, if that doesn't come up straight away, just press the inspector and you'll see it. So parameter mapping. Let's say on BX console, we want to bring down the high end and bring down the, the low end at the same time, for whatever reason you might want to do that. On the parameter mapping, we've got one uh, engaged as kind of standard. So let's go to the two arrows, BX console. Let's go to EQ high gain. And then we're going to go to uh, another one, add mapping, and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to go to BX console, but this time we're going to go to low gain. And you'll see that when I bring up this, the one that is in fact highlighted, which is EQ gain here, as I bring that down, you can see on the low frequencies and the high frequencies, it's bringing them up and down at the same time. But you can get kind of a bit creative with this. Let's say we want to bring up the high gain and bring down the low gain, Well, we can just click invert. So when I bring this up, it's going to bring the low gain down. And as I bring it down, it's going to do the opposite. So it brings one up as the other one comes down. You can also get a bit crazy with this with the scaling. You can make it logarithmic. You can make it reverse logarithmic, linear. You can really go to town on this. I would say smart controls are they're not really hidden, but they're a really great way of actually diving into your plugins and doing stuff with a bit more ease, especially if you're using a hardware controller or something like that. And as before, because I've got this uh, auto select automation parameter engaged, as soon as I hit that button, it's going to bring it up. So if I just go to my volume, for example, if I hit that parameter now, it's going to bring it for me. So I can just go to this section, for example, bring that up, make it go a little bit wild, whatever we want to do. And you'll see that these parameters move in exactly the way I've told them to, but they both move at the same time. So check out the high gain and the low gain. You can just make them move together, which is really creative. So when we go to our automation lanes, I typically use A just to go to my automation. So I've got a load of automation on here. I've got four different automation lanes. Well, if I want to change the low mid Q, I can go to this menu and I can go to there and I can then adjust that one. And then if I want to go to the next one, I can go to low cut threshold and just go here. Or I think it might be compressed threshold. It's irrelevant. But it's kind of a long-winded way of doing it. What we really want to do is just click this little arrow, which is just staring us in the face, but you might not have seen it before because sometimes things that are staring us in the face, we miss. So if we click the arrow there, then we get our volume automation here, but a little plus symbol appears. Hit that plus symbol, you get your next one. And then you get your next one, and then you get your next one. You can see them all in one go. And if we're using a marquee tool, again, we can just draw a line over those and we can move them all at the same time. We can just go in and, and move whatever we want. And it's a really creative way of making hit points on loads of parameters at the same time, just grabbing them and just moving them around for that section of the song. It's a great way of getting around automation a lot easier. And finally, this is kind of something to do with automation, but it's just a little niggle that I have. So sometimes I'll want to do something in the automation to the master fader, or not the master fader, the, the stereo output. Now, typically when you want to bring a track from the mixer into the arrange window, um, you hit control and T. But for some reason, when you do that on the stereo output, sometimes it doesn't let you do it. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. If you go to your stereo output, press control and T, it just kind of flashes up and doesn't let you do it. I'm not entirely sure why, do it again, doesn't let you do it. Um, in some scenarios it does though. I don't have an explanation for that. If you go up to mix and then go to create track automation, create volume fade out on main output. Now this may or may not be exactly what you want to do. Maybe it is, hopefully it is because that'll solve the problem for you. But what this actually does is it creates the stereo output 
on the main arrange window. It does create a fade for you as well, a bit of a weird fade, but a fade nonetheless. It's a great way of bringing up the stereo output on your main page if for whatever reason Logic is just saying, no, I'm not going to create that for you, which sometimes it does because Logic is weird. Hopefully that's uncovered a few automation secrets for you. Let me know if there's anything in automation world that you're struggling with, that you want to know an easier way around, and I'll see if I can fix it for you. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you again soon. Take care.